Hiatus just announced the new category changes for 2024. And while it is not pretty, it is much better than it could have been. Hi, my name is Sean, and I'm with the Credit Card BS Podcast. I'm joined today with my co-host, Sherwin. Hi, I'm Sherwin. Today, we're interrupting our normal Sunday upload schedule with a kind of breaking news update because Hyatt just released their changes to the award chart. So, Sean, why don't you give us a quick rundown of what the award chart is first before we dive into these changes? Yeah, so compared with other hotel programs, which are dynamically priced, Hyatt still operates off a fixed award chart. So they have each hotel assigned a specific category to it, meaning it will always cost the same number of points within that respective category and will never go up or down beyond that, beyond the range they define. So every year what Hyatt does is they'll go through the category award chart and they will move hotels either up or down. And this will make the hotel cost either more or less points. And this is what has just been announced and this is what they do every year. While the past two years have been brutally bad devaluations, this year, while still a devaluation, without a question, is not nearly as bad as we were expecting it to be. Yes, my kind of general feel of the changes, obviously I still need to look at it in more detail, but is that compared to the previous year's changes, it seems more balanced in terms of some hotels going up in categories and some going down in categories. Uh, I feel like the previous two years were just like mostly all of them going up. And to be clear, it, you know, this year it's still mostly going up. But I do see some more properties going down to kind of sort of balance it out. So it's still a devaluation, but not as bad. The other thing that's not as bad as a lot of us feared is that they are not moving to dynamic pricing, which is great because, you know, Marriott, Hilton, IHG have all gone down that route, which has been a lot worse for us, you know. You know, they still have this eight category award chart. And also the other fear that we were having is that they might create a new category nine and move some of their, you know, gem properties up there to a new category, like, you know, Alila Ventana, Big Sur in California, for example. And that has not happened. Um, category eight is still the highest uh, property level. So, you know, I guess that's sort of a relief. Sean, did you have any other big picture takes before we dive into some more specifics? I think, no, I think this is overall a pretty, as you said, fairly balanced evaluation. There are some high tier properties going up, but it's just not as brutal as it's been. Where the past two years, it seems like every property that like you wanted to stay at was going up. And now it's like, okay, there's some that hurt, but like, oh, wow, some of those did not go up and it just, it's better. And remember for what's nice about Hyatt is even with these changes, if you book the hotel now and the price goes up, you don't pay any more points. Now, if you change your dates or remove dates or whatever, they may reprice it. Your mileage may vary on that. Officially, they are supposed to make you pay the new price if you change dates or remove a date. Depends on the representative you're speaking to. And then, but if you don't change anything, you don't pay anymore. And then if you book a hotel in which the price goes down, Hyatt actually credits you the points difference once you stay there. So you don't actually end up paying anymore. So there's no harm in booking now. If you want to book a place where the category is going down, you're not going to be harmed in any way. Yeah, so keep in mind these changes take effect on March 26, 2024. And as Sean said, if you book before and you don't touch that reservation, uh, you will pay the old price. Now, be careful. I know Sean said it's a your mileage may vary. I think it's safest to assume that like if you book something before then and want to keep that price, you don't want to touch your reservation. You don't want to change the dates. You don't want to cancel it. You don't want to you know, change stuff or else you should assume that they will reprice it. Um, but One also, hack is to book single night reservations. Just back to back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is a possible hack. But do keep in mind that, you know, generally awards are refundable. So it may be a wise strategy to speculatively book before March 26 if, you know, you're interested in some properties that are going up in category. And then just like, if you can't go, you can still cancel them and get your points back. So it's not, you know, a big risk. So again, you know, devaluations are kind of inevitable in this game. So it's at least good that Hyatt not only does them in batches year by year rather than like all the time, and also that they're announcing this in advance and giving you a period of time where they're honoring the old price. This is way better than the insane dynamic pricing changes we've seen at you know, Hilton and Marriott, for example. Totally agree. It, this is a fair change, at least, where you have time to react versus some of the IHD properties like Six Sense is one of my favorite hotels in the world. Literally like going up a double in price overnight on the award pricing there. Yeah, and there's been other... You just don't get any notice on it. Yeah, there's been other like airline award chart change. Like I think notoriously the ANA chart from Virgin Atlantic like changed overnight without 
them giving any notice. So yeah, we see this as a good customer service practice. So Sean, why don't you talk about some of the you know notable hotels changing category that you've noticed? Yeah, for sure. So some of the most notable ones, starting with Asia here, Alila Uluwatu. So this is in Bali. This is a, it used to be a Cat 7. It's going to a Cat 8. This, this represents a very significant difference, 10,000 points more a night. I've stayed at this hotel. You book into the base room as a 3,000 square foot villa with a private pool. Very, very nice hotel. Uh, not I, I wasn't as impressed as some other people, but it was a very nice hotel. Not that surprising it's going to a Cat 8. I do actually think it's a fair Cat 8 hotel. Only need to spend a few nights there anyways. Hmm. Also in Bali, a little oh, really Ubud. quickly. So an important di- thing to note is when something goes from 7 to 8, that means it's no longer able to be booked with a category one through seven certificate that you get when you say 69. So it is kind of a big jump, not only in the points pricing, but also because it affects ability to use certificates. Same thing when something jumps from a four to a five uh, is no longer bookable. The cat one through four certificate that you can get with the brand Explorer, with the credit cards, staying 30 nights, et cetera. So something to keep in mind. And would you say, you know, it's this property is still worth it at cat eight? At Ket 8, I think if you're going to Bali, honestly, probably, I think two to three nights is really all you need. We were pretty bored there, and I don't get bored easily when traveling. I'm usually like a lounger kind of guy. I got kind of bored uh, just because like the facilities there weren't as amazing as I was expecting. Nothing wrong with the hotel. Like It's just the pool, for example, wasn't as large as I was expecting, but you have your own private pool. So uh, two to three nights, though, totally sufficient. I think it's worth it for a Bali trip. It's going to be a very, very nice hotel in Bali. Very aspirational type property. Okay. Uh, what are some other notable hotels changing? Yeah. So also in Bali, we got two more here. We got the Alila Ubud going from Cat 2 to 3. You know, it doesn't sound like that big. Oh, 8,000 to 12,000 points. It's a 50% increase in the price. So quite a big jump. Still a decent redemption. I stayed at this property. It's an older hotel, uh, but it's still a good redemption. I, I, Cat 3, not amazing. Andal's Bali is going to Cat 4 to 5, which is kind of brutal because now you can't use the Cat 1 to 4 certs in Bali at that hotel. Uh, and honestly, it really didn't deserve to be a Cat 4 to begin with, given the cash price. So Cat 5 is kind of silly. Uh, going on a better note, Hyatt Place Kyoto is going from a Cat 3 to a Cat 2. That's very cheap. That's not expensive, especially for a place like Kyoto. So you want to go spend an extended time there. Hyatt Place is now yes. going to be your new pick i mean i did notice that in japan many of the properties were dropping in category i saw several going from three to two numerous going from four to three so these are positive changes uh, but the grand hyatt tokyo i think is the only one in japan that's going up from six to seven which yeah that is really odd to me that the grand hyatt's going from six to seven because that's the same price as the park hyatt tokyo and the ondas tokyo which are just better hotels i would much rather stay at either of those in the grand hyatt unless you have some reason to be in the area the Grand Hyatt is, but I don't even think it has the best location either. So that was a little odd to me. Uh, but overall, you're right. Like Japan, we have these changes aren't bad really at all. Uh, also in Asia, Onda Singapore is going five to six. Didn't even really deserve to be a five. So odd is going to a six. Grand Hyatt Taipei, four to three. That's pretty good, actually. Much more uh, better redemption now. If you're using a cat one to four cert, though, it doesn't really matter. Yes, and there's also and a high higher receipt. place in Taipei that's going from two to one. So that's great. Uh, you know, that is, possible. wow, I didn't even know about I, that. I, I have stayed at that property and it is, you know, you know, it's a high place, so it's basic, but it is extremely nice and I think wonderful that, that cat one. Oh, totally. For a cat one, I mean, that's insane. Yeah. Uh, the only other property in Asia I wanted to mention was the high Regency Bangkok going from two to three, which kind of sucks. Uh, yeah. Are there, what are your thoughts on the Asia ones I've mentioned so far? I feel like Asia is not as bad. I mean, we're seeing them dropping category in, you know, Taiwan and Japan. I still need to look at some of the other ones as closely, but I feel like Asia is not hit as hard as, um, for example, I think the like Mexico, Caribbean, um, Latin America was pretty bad this year, but I think, yeah, which I'll go into in a little bit, but you know, Asia fairly mixed back fairly doable so yeah i i I agree i think the closer in vicinity you get to the united states the worse the devalues get uh yeah okay so the next the next i want to talk about i do want to talk about a little in the middle east andas abu dhabi going from two to three that was a very good redemption in abu dhabi for a cheap hotel uh but now at cat three it's not really worth it given the cash price because it's pretty cheap 
Alila, Jabal, and Oman is going from six to seven. Honestly, probably deserves to be a seven. It looks like a really nice hotel, very good resort, still a good redemption value, mostly for the price. So that's not surprising. Uh, Park Hyatt and Grand Hyatt in Istanbul, which is like in between the Middle East and Asia, is going, they're both going up. So Park Hyatt's going from five to six and Grand Hyatt's going from three to four. Disappointing because neither of those were good redemptions. I mean, maybe the Grand Hyatt was decent to begin with. So a little disappointed those are going up. And then the only one I also wanted to mention in Central America, this is a property I stayed at, the Andas Costa Rica. Loved that hotel. It's going from six to seven. This is especially disappointing because like a few years ago, it used to be a cat four. I booked it last year pre-deval at Cat 5, so now it's going to Cat 7, so much more expensive. Honestly, though, still, if you're going during peak season, still a good redemption, so I guess I can't complain that much. Those are really all the properties I wanted to talk about uh, from this deval. How about for you, Sherwin? Yes, a couple other things I wanted to quickly highlight. So first, the situation in California, I thought this was very interesting and amusing. Um, number of hotels in California are actually going down in category. Uh, which is unusual. Um, notably, we see a Cat 1 option appear in the Bay Area of all places. Um, Wild Palms Hotel um, you know, might be a worthy contender for a possible mattress run in the future, especially in, in this location. Um, we see a number of hotels going from Cat 4 to 3, as well as 3 to 2, um, like Tommy Hollywood's going from 4 to 3. Now, there are hotels going up in category, to be clear, but I just wanted to highlight what I think is surprising, which is, you know, just these hotels going down in California. Um, and, you know, I think I, I was a little excited about this at first, but then I reminded myself that a lot of hotels in California are, like, really, really overpriced in the first place. Not that worth it. I mean, sh sh so, like, this is sort of something I should have expected, but at the same time, you know, it's interesting. I don't know. Sean, what do you think? No, I agree. I think California hotels, I mean, U.S. hotels to begin with are just overpriced. One interesting one, I think, and I'm very glad this one dropped, is Alila Morea is going from 8 to 7. That did not deserve to be an 8. That is not a Category 8 worthy property at all. So it is nice that it's going back to a 7. Same price as the somewhat sister property, Park Hyatt Aviara, which is like 15 minutes away from each other. Yeah. Uh, that's nice to see. But yeah, overall, like, they are going down. Still, U.S. hotels are just kind of so overpriced that like, yeah, it's you know more of like a correction than like a decline in price. If that makes sense. Absolutely, I think it was a much needed correction. Um, you know, finally there is a Cat Four option in San Francisco now. Um, Hyatt Centric Fisherman's Wharf, San Francisco, going from five to four. Previously, everything in SF was at least a five. Um, except for the Hyatt Regency by the SFO airport, which is not even part of the central SF. But SF has been so expensive. So now that there's a Cat 4 option, this is great if you want to use a free night certificate. Um, unfortunately, the Grand Hyatt San Diego is going from a 4 to 5. This was a really good option to use free night certificates. Uh, will no longer be available after that change. Another thing to know, and I sort of alluded to this in the beginning, there are no changes to like the high-end properties in NorCal. So I'm talking about Ventana Big Sur, Carmel Valley Ranch, Alila Napa Valley. They all remain at category eight. Um, and you know, that's good. They're not creating a new category nine, but I'm still bothered by you know, you know, Carmel Valley Ranch in the previous years going from a, a six to a seven to an eight, and now staying at an eight, uh, when it's not all inclusive compared to Ventana Big Sur not that far away, which is all inclusive. The fact that they're both category eight, I cannot possibly justify going back to Carmel Valley Ranch, which is a shame because I really liked that property when I stayed there when it was category seven. So a uh, little rambly here, a little more details probably are necessary, but those are kind of my thoughts. Uh, Sean, any other things about California before we move on? No, I, I, I agree with your thoughts. I don't think I have anything else. Uh, you pretty much covered it well. Okay. Uh, one other thing, um, we're seeing quite some big L's in like major metropolitan areas, major cities in the U.S. So like in D.C., I'm really sad that Grand Hyatt and the Regency are going from four to a five. And Grand Hyatt, Washington, is a, was a great redemption for category one through four free night, especially if you have club lounge access. Um, so that's going up to a five. The Hyatt places are going from a three to four. And the Park Hyatt is going from a five to a six, which I think is really disappointing that Park Hyatt was never really 
you know, up to standard with the other park Hyatts in the first place, from my experience. Um, now, interestingly, the Thompson DC stays at a four, uh, and it actually dropped from a five to a four last year. You know, Thompson used to be more expensive than Grand Hyatt, but now with these changes, the Grand Hyatt going up and the Thompson staying at a four from the drop last year, it's now cheaper than Grand Hyatt, which is kind of puzzling, but that's what it is. Uh, also, uh, Chicago, kind of sad because, you know, there are these two really good category four properties, Chicago Athletic Association, Thompson that I've stayed at. Uh, the Chicago Athletic Association already went from four to five last year, and now Thompson is going from four to five. So, you know, both of these great certificate properties no longer bookable, and the Regency is also going from a three to a four, which is you know a shame. And then finally, before we move on from the U.S., uh, Hawaii, uh, the Oahu properties are going up, uh, which is you know crazy because these aren't like super fancy properties anyway like the high place is going from a three to a four so that will be the only option in oahu of a certificate for going forward because the centric is going from four to a five and the regency curiously is staying out of five so now you have both the centric and the regency out of five which doesn't make sense because i think the regency is like the better hotel right so why would you book the centric uh, sean you stayed at um uh, some of these right Yes, yeah, so I've stayed at the Regency. I haven't stayed at the Centric, but from what I understand, yeah, the Regency is just a better hotel. The Centric rooms might be a little nicer, newer, but the Regency is like a better location, much better chance of getting like a full ocean view, tons of full ocean views. If you're a globalist, it's like almost for sure you're getting an ocean view there. Yeah. Uh, it's a, They have a decent, I mean, a decent by US standards club lounge, okay? By Asia standards, no, it's not a good club lounge, but by US standards for a Regency, it's a surprisingly decent club lounge. So yeah, the Regency is just the better pick. Yes. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention, sorry, it's going along a little long now, but um, the all-inclusives continue their pattern of horrible devaluations. Uh, I, I want to highlight the Hyatt Ziva Los Cabos was 20,000 points you know, two years ago. And then last year, it went to 30,000. Now it's at 40,000 per night, which is insane. Uh, it, you know, 40,000 is almost... I mean, it's basically... Like the same price as Ventana Big Sur, and I'm telling you, the quality is not comparable at all. So, I mean, Sean, Sean there are other like all inclusives, right, that just keep going up. It seems to be this interesting trend where, like, last year they totally like nuked the all inclusive redemption chart, and now I was I was honestly expecting like the all inclusives to become more reasonably priced, and that other hotels get worse. But no, it's like they just want to keep making the all inclusive chart worse because I don't know. Who is going to want to book the Ziva for 40,000 points? I mean, the Thompson the Cape, which is just a better hotel, is 30,000 points. I understand it's not inclusive. The Park Hyatt that's going to be opening soon-ish is going to be 40,000 points at a Cat 8. So 40,000 points for a Ziva or 40,000 points for a Park Hyatt? I mean, come on. This is, it's getting stupid. I, I would never want to pay. I didn't want to pay 30,000 points for the Ziva. There's no way I'm paying 40. Now, I understand uh, yeah. there's going to be people that just want the all-inclusive. Oh, I don't want to pay for food. But, yeah, what are you going to do? Yeah, I mean, I will say... I, I did say at the Ziva Los Cabos myself, and it was a steal at 20,000 points. It's great. But even at that time, when it was about to go up to 30,000, I'd say I would never pay 30,000 for this. And honestly, I was expecting correction down to, like, maybe 25,000 this year. And, it, you know, in fact, it jumped to 40,000. Just, just a hilarity. Anyway, in summary... Um, some good slash mixed changes in California and Taiwan and Japan and Asia. Um, overall bad changes in big U.S. cities like D.C., Chicago, Hawaii, and as well as all-inclusives in Caribbean Latin America. Anyway, that's my quick take. I, I probably have to study a little more to get all the details. But Sean, anything else you wanted to add? I do want to say that the fact that these changes are the way that they are might be a good sign. Because there's Hyatt is not focused on squashing good redemption values. I'm sure there's an economic side of the amount of people that are redeeming points at these type of properties and the reason that they're increasing the categories. So, you know, my guess is that these all-inclusives is there's just probably a lot of people, especially those that aren't as, like, well-versed in this game, that just get points from their credit cards and go, oh, I want to stay at an all-inclusive because I just don't want to have to worry about paying anything. And they use the points for that, and it's probably a very high percentage of their of their guests and the reason this is a good sign though 
is that like Hyatt seems to be totally fine with like outsized redemptions existing. It's not like some other chains where they just like want to squash the good redemptions. They're Delta. fine with them existing. It, <laughs> like Delta, right? They just Delta just doesn't want to have any good redemptions at all. But Hyatt's like, we can still have good redemptions, but we still have to operate within, you know, our certain economics of this and uh, however they're doing it. Yeah. Um, so I think that's like a good sign that like their their mind is in the right place and that these changes, while not great, they could have been a whole lot worse. I mean, we could have seen a Cat 9 introduced and a bunch of properties go up to Cat 9 and then a bunch of properties go to Cat. Like it could have been worse across the board. Yeah. This is not great, but it's definitely like, okay, it's we can deal with it. Yeah, I think you bring up a very good point. I think Hyatt still is aware that many of its loyal members care about getting outsized value on your points. Unlike, you know, Hilton is basically just, you know, a cash rebate on every stay. And, you know, unless you're doing really high end stuff. But yeah, I think that's a good mindset that they seem to have. Also, I just wanted to add that uh, Sean and I did an episode earlier where we talked about a possible premium height card and we said you know in our opinion that cat one to four certificates should be expanded to cat one through five considering all of these devaluations a lot of types of properties going from four to five not being able to be used and this was a big frustration in california and i think these changes only further reinforce um, our desire for hyatt to change their certificates to allow for cat five frankly a one through four certificate is so much less valuable now than what it was years before all of these various devaluations totally agree it's it's tough because you wish there was some way to top it off like i love what ihg has done with their certificate where you can just top it off as many points as you want that makes it so convenient to use that you don't have to like worry about it now i get hyatt it's not dynamically priced like ihg so it wouldn't work the same way but if they could do something where you could top it off combine certs something would be nice because if you're trying to stay at hotels in the U.S., it's getting very tough to use these Cat 1 to 4s. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I would be happy if they increased the Hyatt card annual fee to like 150 just gave us Cat 1 through 5 certificates, or like allow us, as Sean said, to supplement points with Cat 1 through 4 certificates, kind of pay the difference for better redemptions. But, oh well, we'll see what happens. Um, anyway, is there anything else you wanted to add before we wrap up for today? I think that's everything. Okay, so if you enjoyed today's episode, um, please check out all of our other episodes on YouTube and on Spotify and anywhere else you listen to your podcast. Please also subscribe and like. Uh, it greatly helps out this channel and the algorithm. And finally, if you are interested in you know any credit cards that we've talked about or any credit cards for that matter, please consider using the referral links in our description below. It greatly helps us out. You have no idea. And Sean, finally, why don't you plug our Discord? So if you want to connect with an elite group of award travelers 100% for free and get advice on credit cards, travel redemptions, everything like that, check out the 100% free Travel Lane Discord group. There'll be a pinned comment as well as a link in the description. But thank you so much for watching and we will see you next week.